through some mental health challenges and he's not with us right now he's he's uh, away from LA and uh, I missed him and a lot of people have been asking where's his brother and, and you know I'm staying in contact with him and he was like uh, oh I'm, I'm coming back to LA don't worry I'm just away for a while I'll be back and so I check up on him every week like maybe two or three times hey how are you how are you how are you and uh, you know, I love them. I, if you, for those of you that don't know, I'm a mental health therapist, so I work really well with those who are mentally challenged, okay? Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to help them, feel them loved, and all of that good stuff. And he literally brings joy to my life, so that's why I also like connecting with him. Uh, recently, though, on 4th of July, he told me, uh, hey, you know what? I, I'm coming home. I'm coming to L.A., and uh, I, I'm taking a, a, a Greyhound, and I'm, I'm going to be there. And I said, wow, that's encouraging. You know, like, I'll pick you up. He's all like, you would? I said, yeah, totally. Just tell me when you're gonna be here. He says, I think I'm gonna arrive tomorrow around 4 p.m. I said, 4 p.m. in the afternoon, great. I don't really have major plans, 4th of July, only in the morning and later, late night in the evening. So afternoon, I'm pretty free. So that works great for me, I'll be there. He's like, awesome, I'll see you there. And we'll work out the stuff with the housing and we'll make sure everything's good. And I said, no problem, brother. I'll see you there. Love you. I told people, I'm like, hey, I'm busy on the afternoon. I got to pick up this brother. He's my brother in Christ. So I'm going to go and be ready. And people are like, great, do your thing. My wife was like, make it happen. Go, go pick him up and take him to where he needs to be. Around 3 o'clock, I just wanted to make sure he was on his way. So I called him. Hey. Everything on time? Because I just want to make sure, you know, I don't want to get there and you not be there. And he says, yeah, I'm actually right now about to arrive. I should be there like 15 minutes before 4. I said, perfect. This is great. Dude, let's go eat afterwards. He saw like, hey, man, if, if you want to go eat, we could go eat burgers, you know, all that bad food. I said, great. That's awesome. I look forward to that. It's 4th of July. We could pick out. I don't care. Let's go. So I'm on my way, I'll see you there. He's like, see you soon, bro, love you, much love. I'm like, much love, bro, see you soon. That's my little catchphrase, much love. So I get there and I'm waiting, the Greyhound station is 3.50 and he's not there. Mm -hmm. Then it's like 4.15 and you know, I'm on the phone with people, people bugging me about the building. Well, where are we meeting at? And we, we should buy something, we should lease something, we should do something, who said that something? And I'm like, man, I'm just, you know, fielding calls like, man, be quiet. I got I to gotta pick this brother up. So I'm looking around and I don't see him. It's 435. I get down from my car. I go in the station. I'm looking around. He's not here. I'm like, man, where's he at? I go back outside. I call the brother repeatedly. I'm like, I must have called him 10 times. He's not picking up the phone and he's not picking up the text. I said, are you here? Are you okay? Is everything okay? I could come somewhere else. Am I at the wrong Greyhound station? I don't know. You got to let me know because I'm here waiting. Then it's 5.15. So I'm there now about an hour and a half or hour and 20 minutes or so. And the phone just goes straight to voice messages. And I'm like, this brother stood me up. What? I don't know. Maybe he must have found a ride with someone else. I don't know. Man. I hope the bus is okay. I don't know. I tell people, hey, so-and-so was just not available, so I'm going home. I'm going to go back to whatever my routine was for the day. He calls me about a week later. Mm. And I had called him probably five times out of those seven days. And he says, you know, I have to apologize to you. And he sounded so clear. No mental health challenges at all. And I was like, what happened? And he's all like, I have to apologize to you because I lied to you. And I said, what did you lie about? Don't worry about it. It's okay. I forgive you. I love you. He's all like, I'm not in L.A. And I said, I thought you said you were coming to L.A. I was at the, Union, at the Greyhound station there where you told me to be. 6th Street in San Pedro. You told me to be there. He's all like, no, I lied to you, man. And I'm really sorry for what I did. I don't feel love from people. Mm. And so I wanted to test you to see if you would actually even drive to be there for me. Mm. I said, you put me through all of that just so that you can know that I love you? You know I love you, bro. Mm. He's all like, I know, but I just haven't been feeling love sometimes from other people. Mm. And I just wanted to see if you would even go down there and pick me up. Mm. And I said, man, I'm so sorry you feel that way. Wow. 
he's like, I feel stupid. I feel like disrespected. I feel like, you know, because of my disabilities and all this. And I said, bro, we love you. Mm -hmm. And whatever we need to make that wrong or right, we'll do it. Because we're a church that repents. Mm -hmm. We're a church that loves. Aren't we that church, guys? Yes. yes. Well, let's see. In Romans chapter 12, verse 9. This is all about Jesus Christ's love. Love must be sincere. When we hear that, I know a lot of people go, well, that means when people love, it should be genuine. People should love me genuinely. That's sometimes the way I've read it. Love must be sincere. But I'm here to encourage us today that that's not really what it means, that people should love us sincerely. What the writer here is Paul, who's writing to the church in Rome. He's saying, you need to love sincerely. Sometimes when we read in the Bible, we go, this is what other people should be treating me like. But what this writer here is saying, Paul is encouraging the church in Rome, you need to be sincere with your love. And what does it look like? Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. It's all about Jesus. Amen. It's never about us. And what we get out of people, they don't meet my needs. Mm -hmm. They don't understand me. Wow. I can't trust them because so-and-so. Don't, you know, share my business with other people. What kind of love is that? Wow. Honor one another above yourselves. Never lack in zeal. Serving the Lord. Amen. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. When's the last time we've had people over to our home? To where we live. Do people even know where you live? Wow. People don't know because you're not practicing hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Mm. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible. See, this love is possible, guys. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Mm. So what would you like us to think today, Pablo, during the communion? I want you to think of this sincere love that came from Jesus Christ. Mm. Everything is for him because everything is from him. The only reason we can have this possible love is because he made it possible. He died on that cross. He didn't expect anything. If no one responded to the message, he would have done it. Not one single person. You know what? Oh, well. But I'm going to show you my love. And today as you meditate on that, re remember, Jesus died on that cross. Not because he expected you to, or, you know, to be perfect and when I, he knew you were going to be unfaithful to him. He knew that you were going to fall short. He knew that we were not going to bring glory to him. But he did it out of love to give us another opportunity. And I hope in our hearts we could be sincere, not in expecting love, but in giving love. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer.